Hi, my name is Arvi, and I am a member of the International Coaching Federation. In the Facebook page of our local chapter, the most frequently asked question is, how do I become a coach? And if I were to count the number of times that that question got asked, I swear, we just do a copy-paste whenever we answer that question. So I thought of making this video so that you can get all the details that you need on how to become a coach. Okay, so let's start. Well, first of all, there is a wrong way to do it. The wrong way to do it is just because you are a high-ranking corporate executive, let's say a director, a vice president, or a president, you think you have a lot of skills, a lot of experiences, a lot of wisdom that you can share, that one day you can just print a business card and say, hey, I'm a professional coach. Well, really, what, what that is, is a mentor. A mentor is someone who shares their skills, knowledge, experience, wisdom with someone who needs it. And that is not what the International Coaching Federation is about. We are not the International Mentoring Association. So the International Coaching Federation is all about coaches. And the right way to become a coach is by going to coaching school. And, you know, if you think of any profession like a doctor or an engineer or, or, or whatever profession out there, it all begins with learning as much as you can about the profession. And then after you've done a little bit of learning, you probably put that into practice. And after a while, you probably take the board exam or the bar exam. And then after that, after you practice some more, you probably decide on some sort of specialization. And then you study some more, and then you get certified some more, and then you practice some more. In short, it's, it's, it's a long process of learning. Well, the same thing is true about being a coach. If you find a credentialed coach, a credentialed coach is someone with three letters right after their name. It could be ACC, PCC, or MCC. You can be sure that that person spent a lot of time, a lot of effort, a lot of money even to get to where they are. And they've done a lot of actual coaching hours just to be able to get that credential. So let's begin. How do you find the right coaching school? Well, first of all, if you ask an officer of the local chapter of the International Coaching Federation, they will tell you to go to the website. And that is the correct answer. Why? Well, because ICF is a federation of coaches who come from different schools. And officers can't be biased and say, hey, why don't you go to the coaching school that I went to? Well, that's just not ethical. Because we have no idea what the other schools are offering. So the best thing to do is go to the website, coachingfederation.org. And from the homepage, you can see coach training. So you click on that tab and then you click on the option find training. And that is going to take you to a very interesting page. On that page, you specify things like, what country are you from? And what kind of training do you want? Is it in-person or virtual? And well, given the pandemic, most likely you're going to be choosing virtual. And then the next thing that they might ask you is, do I want an ACTP? Do I want an ACSTH? Or do I want a CCE? And this is where a lot of people don't know what to put in. So if you go to the website, though, it's going to give you a brief description of what those letters mean. But, but now that we're making this video anyway, I thought I'd, I'd share that with you. So CCE, Continuing Coach Education, that's definitely not the course that you want to sign up for because you're not yet a coach. CCE, Continuing Coach Education. The name itself simply implies that, okay, this is something that you take once you're already a coach and you want to continue with your education. So it's now a choice. Is it ACSTH or ACTP? So let's begin with ACSTH. ACSTH is, well, you can say it's like the a la carte uh, coaching training. It probably gives you X number of hours. So the minimum in order for you to be a member of the International Coach Federation is 60 hours of coach training. That's probably what you're going to want to sign up for if you want to become a member of the International Coaching Federation, and if you want to be credentialed in the future. Now, it doesn't mean that if you sign up for something less than 60 hours that it's not going to be valuable. It probably is going to be valuable. It's just that it's not going to be enough for you to qualify for a credential in the future. You still can, like if you take multiple ACSTH courses, 
And once you reach the required minimum, then you could apply for a credential in the future. But know that it's going to take more than one course. So an ACT, STH course with at least 60 hours of coaching, that's the minimum that you should be gunning for. Now, what about an ACTP course? The ACTP course is definitely going to give you the minimum required and more. It's probably around 125 hours at least. And the value of that is in the future. If you want to apply for a higher credential like a PCC, you have enough training hours to do it. And you can think of an ACTP course as something that gives you everything that you need. So you get the classroom hours, you get mentoring, you get a lot of practice, and they expose you to different scenarios. And you believe me that it's, it's going to take a lot of time. It's going to take months of hard work in such a way that by the time you graduate for an ACTP course, you pretty much know that you're ready. Okay, so once you graduated from those courses, you get a certificate. And what that means is that you are a professionally trained coach. You didn't just print a business card. You studied hard. You practiced. And now you can confidently say that, hey, I was professionally trained. And for most people, that's where they start. Professional training. Because what comes after that would be credentialing. Credentialing is when ICF itself says that, okay, you meet certain criteria, you meet a certain level of skill, and we are willing to confer this particular credential. So that could be the associate certified coach, if you have completed at least 100 hours of actual coaching. Professional certified coach, if you have completed 500 hours of actual coaching. And master certified coach, so you're, so, you're sort of like the Yoda of coaching. You're, you're pretty much can face Darth Vader or, or anyone else. And that is, uh, well, please take note though, that aside from the number of coaching hours, there is a certain requirement in terms of the number of training hours that you've met and that you've gone through the necessary mentoring from someone who knows what they're talking about to mentor you. And, and so that, that's where it starts. It starts with going to coaching school and then accumulating enough hours so that you can then apply for a credential and then applying for a higher credential as soon as you meet the minimum number of hours for both training and coaching and for passing the assessment. So what does that mean? So how long does it take to become a coach? So it's not going to happen in one day. Now, if, if there was no pandemic, some of the coaching schools can give you one week of training and then after that you do a series of mentoring sessions. But knowing how difficult it is to stay awake via Zoom or via Teams or, or any other virtual way of training, most likely you're going to be spending 90 minutes to two hours per session. And if you are trying to complete 60 hours or 125 hours of training, that's going to take a couple of weeks, maybe months. So that's how long that it's going to take. So I don't know, maybe four months, six months, that's pretty normal. And then the next thing is, um, once you practice, that's going to take some time. So I don't know, maybe it will take a year for someone to become a credentialed coach or ACC. And probably three, five years for someone to become a... P so there's no fixed number of years to get there. It really depends on, on your appetite for taking on coaching clients. So the question now is, when can you say that you're a coach? Well, for some people, as soon as they get the certificate and they know that they've been professionally trained, they're ready. They're ready to sell their services. They're ready to charge money for the services that they offer. For some people, they're a little bit of a slow burn. They want to take more coaching hours. They want to do... Uh, more training, and there comes a point when they go, okay, I'm ready. I'm ready to charge for my services. So it's really up to you. And the journey is very personal for a lot of people. But please know that just like being a doctor, becoming a coach is going to take some time. It's going to take a lot of real work, a lot of studying, a lot of applying what you've learned, 
and applying for a higher credential as you move up the path of becoming a coach. So I hope that answers your question. If you have other questions that we did not get to cover um, in this episode, please feel free to type your questions in the comments section below. And, you know, like as any YouTuber would say, uh, if you found value in this short episode, please like the video. And since I plan to come up with more videos like this that would guide a new coach or, or, or guide someone who wants to become a coach, then subscribe and click on the notification bell. So thank you very much for watching this video, and I hope to see you soon in the future videos that I'm going to create on the series on how to become a coach.